When you're taking a photo, one thing to consider is if it's a portrait or even a feature photo, is, is the background blurry and then the subject in focus. That would happen if you had obviously a wide open aperture, low depth of field, low number f-stop. Now if you took a photo and you had more of a mid-range f-stop or a longer depth of field, higher number, more closed aperture, you can go back in Photoshop and add what I call a simulated depth of field. So to follow along, go ahead and open depth of field 1 or depth of field 2, either one. First thing we want to do is press Control J on the PC or Command J on the Mac that duplicates a layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to blur one of these layers and then we're going to use masking and let her pop through tack sharp as well as the foreground area, the grass, so that should be tack sharp. Then the mid-range, we'll just have a gradual uh, effect where it maybe paint some gray in there. We could use a gradient too, but regardless, we want to really blur out the background. So it's less distracting and just a better photo overall. So after you've duplicated this layer, let's blur this top layer. So go ahead and go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and it really depends on how much you want to blur the background out. So just ignore the, or the foreground area and the subject. Just look at the background and just think about how blurred we want it. So that's probably pretty good. So I got about 4.8, but depending on the photo you're using and really how blurred out the background we want it to be. So I'm gonna, as a reminder, I'm gonna just call this blurred background. So double click the name. I'll just call it a blurred layer. And then the bottom one, I'm gonna double click and just call it original layer. So we got the blurred layer and the original layer. So there's two ways to do this effect. We can add a mask to the blurred layer when it's on top and then mask through where she is and also the foreground color and then slightly mask through the middle ground and leave the background blurry. Or we could put the original layer on top and just mask through this background area. Either way. So I'll probably do the second method. So the original layer is on top, the one that's in focus, blurred layer is on bottom. Go ahead and add a layer mask. So we're going to click that at the bottom of the layers panel. Creates this mask here. Make sure your foreground is set to black. If it's not, just press D on the keyboard. That'll do default foreground and background, white and black, and then press X, and it'll flip those. Choose a nice soft edge brush on the toolbar, and make sure hardness is set to 0%. You can change the size there, or you can press the right and left brackets to resize it. We would really create a selection around her if we wanted to be really uh, detailed, but I'm just going to blur out this area here so you see that it's blurring out the background but not blurring out her. So something like this. So we do have a soft edge brush. We could do a hard edge brush. All right, 100% and go right up to the edge of her and then left bracket to make it smaller. The problem is as we get pretty close, we really need to zoom in. So if we wanted to make a selection, for this example, we could use the quick selection tool and just click and drag around the edge, just like that. And then flip back to the brush tool and just brush. And if you think it's too harsh of an edge, you can go to, when you have the selection, select, modify, feather, add like a, maybe a two pixel feather that actually looks pretty good there. We'd probably zoom in and just really modify those with more of a selection. But for the purposes of this lecture, I just want to do it pretty quickly. Uh, let's see, left bracket. So I do a selection there, but I think this should be fine for our purposes. I'm going to switch back to a soft edge brush. All right. Whenever I create a mask like this, so we're, we're racing through to the, the bottom layer, right? Whenever I create one like this, I like to hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, and then we can see areas we missed. So over here, I need to paint some black in over here as well. You could select that, of course, and fill it in, but all right. So I'm going to Alt-click it again. And obviously, the, we can improve this edge a little bit more, but just for the purposes of time, I uh, just don't want to spend the entire time just doing the selections, but so you get the idea. 
So the background is blurred out, and the problem is there's this harsh edge to it, even with a soft edge brush. So really we need to paint in some gray. So choose the foreground color, and just pick kind of a mid-tone. And we're going to paint in gray here instead of black. And here as well. And this is the middle ground, maybe a little bit farther up. And you can Alt or Option click and see that we've got some gray. The gray is going to partially show through to the bottom layer, which is the blur blurred layer. And part of the top layer will show. When I completely mask out these pixels up here, then it's going to show through to the blurred layer. And then the area that I just have white, it's just going to show the top layer. So that's our simulated depth of field. We could also do kind of a gradient effect. So I'm going to get rid of this mask and create a new one. I'm going to delete it. Create a new mask here. And if I choose the gradient tool and up on the options panel, just make it from foreground to background so it's white to black. And make sure your mode is set to normal and hold shift for a straight line and just click and drag from the top down to the bottom while we have this mask selected. And that's another effect. The problem is we don't want her to be blurry at all. Actually, I'm going to redo that, bring it a little bit farther down. Okay. So we need to paint white back in there. So we'll flip that, make sure our foreground is white. We'll paint on top of her so she's tack sharp and again I do a selection if we want to be really precise All right and that's more of a gradual look so if we look at our mask here it's gradually going from masked out to not masked out and then I'm making sure the foreground I'd also paint this foreground to make sure it's white because we want this to be tack sharp we want her and the foreground to be tack sharp the middle ground to be gradually going into a masked out area which will show through. So that's the simulated depth of field, two methods, whether you use the gradient or whether you paint it in. The idea is that we're blurring out the background so it looks like we used a low depth of field, a wide open aperture after the fact.